Hey guys, this is our second video on cast diagrams, and here we're going to be solving trick equations uh, where the trick function is set equal to a negative value. So in part one, we were setting them equal to a positive value, and in part three, we're going to look at uh, finding solutions of theta that are not just in the interval 0 to 360. For now though, we are looking at solving trig equations with negative values. So, if you haven't watched part 1 yet, I highly recommend watching that before this one. A brief little recap though of a cast diagram. Basically, we split the 360 degree rotation into four quadrants. So starting top right, we got quadrant 1, uh, then top left is quadrant 2, bottom left is 3, bottom right is 4. So as we go around anti-clockwise, our angles increase, so the positive x-axis is 0 degrees, positive y-axis is 90, and negative x is uh, 180, negative y is negative 270 and then when we come back around to the positive x-axis that's 360. So we got these letters C A S T which is where the name cast comes from although it's a bit annoying because they're not actually in our order they're in the order A S T C so my way of remembering that is Avengers stop total Calamity. Now each of these letters is telling us which of the trick functions is positive in that quadrant. So A is all, so all trick functions. Sine, cos and tan are all positive in the first quadrant. And then only sine in quadrant 2, only tan in quadrant 3 and only cos in quadrant 4. So now that we're solving equations equal to negative values, we are now interested in the quadrants where the sine function is negative. So let's do some examples. First up then we want to solve sine of theta is minus one half for values of theta between zero and 360 degrees. So, Minus one half is negative. So first of all, we want to find the quadrants in which sine is negative. So that's in quadrant three and quadrant four. So in quadrant three, I'm going to draw this line out here, and then I'm going to mirror that through the y-axis into quadrant four. Okay, so what we're also going to do here, we're going to call this angle, angle X. Now we know because we mirrored this line in the y-axis, this angle is exactly the same size. So that too is angle X. Now then, if we use our calculator, so if we do, uh, well, we would do Theta equals the inverse sine of minus one half. But your calculator for that is going to give you minus 30. Now that is not in the interval that we are interested in. So what this has actually done, it's given us a negative angle. So on the cast diagram, as we start at zero degrees, and then we start moving around anti-clockwise, let's draw a graph to explain. So sine looks like that. So as we're moving anti-clockwise around the cast diagram, we are being taken to the right on the sine curve. Now, if we've just got a value of minus 30, oh, that's done. 
is find as a value that kit. So we've gone from the origin and we've gone to the left on the function. So in terms of the cast diagram, that has taken us 30 degrees clockwise. So what this has actually told us is that X is 30 degrees. So now that we're armed with that, we can actually find the values of theta that we are interested in. So remember, we always want our values to be between the positive x-axis and the radiuses and the radii that we draw when we're in the uh, interval 0 to 360. So our first value of theta is that angle. Now this angle is going to be 180 plus x. So that's 180 plus 30. So theta is 180 plus 30, which is going to give us 210. So that's our first value of theta. And then our other value goes all the way around from the positive x-axis anti-clockwise until we hit the second blue line. Now that angle is the whole 360 degrees minus x. So 360 degrees minus 30 degrees. So theta is also equal to 360 minus 30, which is 330. So our two values of theta for this one are theta equals 210 and 3.30. Good times. Okay, so from that, an important little thing to take is positive angles, uh, positive angles, move as anti-clockwise, negative angles, move as clockwise and they move us backwards along the graph so to the left of whatever graph we are dealing with so positive angles move us anti-clockwise negative angles move us clockwise okay example two so this time i want to solve cos of theta equals minus four fifths between 0 and 360 degrees to one decimal place. So, first up, identify the quadrants where cos is a negative. So that's quadrant 2 and quadrant 3. So, in each of those, we're going to draw a line between the centre and then we're going to mirror that down in quadrant 3. So, again, I'm going to call this angle X and we know this angle down here is also angle X because that line is reflected through the X axis. So with this one we can find our first value of theta nice and easily. So if we do the inverse cos of minus 4 fifths to one decimal place, we can get 143.1. So that is our first value of theta. So, if we zoom in here, that gives us this whole angle. So that is 143.1. Now from that, we can work out what angle X is. So we know this part here is a right angle. So 
uh, X then. Where should we do it? Let's go up here. So, X is 143.1 minus 90. Now, 143.1 minus 90 is 53.1. So, x is 53.1. So, now that we know that, we can work out our second value for theta. So, our second value for theta is the angle all the way around from the positive x, all the way around to this blue line. Now, if we went all the way to the negative y-axis, that would be 270 degrees. So, this value of theta is 270 minus 53.1, which is going to be 216.9 degrees to one decimal place. So, for this one, our two values of theta are theta equals 1 for 3.1 and theta is 216.9. Good times. Okay, last example for this video then, so we want to solve tan of theta equals minus 1. So again, minus 1 is negative, so we need to identify the quadrants where tan is negative. So, that's quadrant 2 and quadrant 4. So, what we're going to do is draw a diameter all the way through like that. Now, it's this angle that we're going to call angle x, and then by vertically opposite angles, this guy is angle x2. Okay, so, we can find the first solution then, by doing the inverse tan of minus 1. So, the inverse tan of minus 1, well, that's going to give us minus 45 degrees. So again, with this one, we have a solution that we're not interested in. However, we can use it to help us get to the ones that we're interested in. So what that's told us in minus 45 degrees has actually told us that if we go anti-clockwise, no, sorry, clockwise around the cast diagram by 45 degrees, we will hit this line. So that angle there is 45 degrees. Again, a negative angle makes us go clockwise around the diagram. So what this actually tells us too is that angle X is 45 degrees. That first angle of 45 degrees is exactly splitting X, or sorry not X, the quadrant in half. Half of 90 is 45. So angle X is 45 too. So now we can work out our values for theta. So first one we're interested in is that angle there. So that theta is going to be 90 because this is a right angle plus 45 now that is going to give us 135 and then the other one is going to go all the way around from positive x all the way around to that so we can either think of that as 270 plus 45 or 360 minus 45 
either one of them. It will give us exactly the same thing because they are exactly the same. So let's go theta equals 270 plus 45 and that is 315. So our two values for theta here are theta equals 135 and theta equals 315. Good times. Okay guys, that's it for part two. So in part three, we'll have a look at questions where the interval is not just zero to 360. Hope this has helped. Take care.